Hey everyone, and welcome to Almost Cancelled. I am Peter, that is Connor, and we are going to talk about Marvel's The Defenders, Season 1, Episode 5. It's called Take Shelter. Full spoilers for the episode, as always. I'm going to be honest. This is probably the weakest episode of the season so far. Do you yeah, concur with that sentiment? I, I feel like it had some strong moments. It, did, it absolutely did. Um, but also, I feel like, it, just from a pacing point of view... This was the one that I really felt kind of the length. This was the only one so far where I've kind of looked at the clock and went, how much is left? Mm. Well, um, that's fair. And I think a big part of that is that there is, and I hate to keep blaming the same character, but uh, is, is, is to do with, well, not, not even the character, it's to do with Iron Fist the show. Because he's not the only character who pops up in this episode specifically. In fact, right. the biggest groaning moment I think I've had of this season so far is uh, if I, I think it was just last episode, we were talking about, well, there's technically only four fingers of the hand now because the fifth one's dead. And, I, and then we even pondered, yeah, but what if you came back? It, you know, it's like, and sure enough, uh, Bakoto. Bakuto. Bakuto. Close. Every time. Every time. <laughs> just a couple of syllables off. Uh, Bakuto. Uh, as soon as I heard his voice, I was like, oh. because as much as. I mean, as, as much as arguably the character shouldn't be a problem, he it brings kind of the is. baggage, though, doesn't he? I mean, there's baggage, but I also it just kind of made me realise that I just didn't like that character all that much either. No, you're right. He was he's kind of the least interesting out of the fingers that we've seen, really. By far, what, like, you know, what, what, what a weird sense. He's the least interesting out of the fingers. <laughs> Yet it made perfect sense in context. In context, sure, but it's a weird sentence on its own, and I'm sticking yeah. to that. Do you know? You know, it, it occurred to me the idea of, you know, the the, the fingers of the hand all being from Kun Lun. Mm-hmm. Do you think they're trying to get away from the whole, you know, you know, Danny being a white savior thing, and because this this shows if they were part of Kun Lun, you know, Kun Lun was really this quite diverse place, like always. Hmm. Uh, I don't know. I wonder if they're just trying to kind of slowly retcon away from the idea that it is Asian. Like it was hinted at, but you know, in Daredevil and Iron Fist, that was kind of the implication. I get what you're saying, and maybe the choice to like cast someone that's going to Weaver as the leader of the hand is maybe kind of that, but I don't think that was the the choice. I, I feel like Sigourney Weaver was cast because they wanted someone a big name, and let's be honest, yeah. the sad truth is, is all the big names are probably white. That is the sad reality, yeah. Uh, so we started where episode four left off. Uh, although we had like a kind of sort of other side to the to introduct it, we had all the other fingers of the hand sort of assembling, um, and sort of like you know we jumped you know the the Asian guy jumped in the window and that was kind I, of. I the, actually really like this this opening. Yeah, it was fine. Yeah, I was I was done with the opening, uh, and all of it's going off, and Matt kind of pisses off because he, he wants to try and talk sense into Electra because he's like at this point he knows it's definitely her he's talked to Stick and all that stuff yeah. and he, go, he goes to talk to her which pisses off the rest of the team uh, I, I will say I, I had a weird moment so all this thing goes down and Luke gets up by a truck and I thought it was weird that Jessica just says oh he's been taken by the hand because I'm like I didn't really see that I just saw no, him get hit neither. by a truck I saw him get hit by a truck yeah and Luke being Luke I'm thinking well yeah it may, it may hurt a bit but he's probably it's probably all right, yeah. yeah. Uh, but the last, the last statement that struck me is really weird. So they all run into the sort of the behind the the restaurant, which is where Matt was with Electra, mm. and obviously Electra uh, inter- intervenes when Matt's about to get killed. And again, it's another hint that maybe she's remembering things, maybe she's feeling something, even if it's just instinct and it's not yeah. like conscious sort of thought. Uh, but sticks like, oh, sewer here it smells like shit, but it's the only way out. And I'm like, how's it the only way out? There's a fence just there. You can... I, I think the implication is that the hand would have it surrounded, like they were all okay. out. Okay. So that was, you know, a way to the conceit. Because I thought that as well at first. It, it just—it felt like it was such an open back. I'm like, just go into the street. It, it was an open back, which is why I just uh, assumed that it was like it's the only way to get out without being followed. Okay. Okay, I'll accept it. But it just it struck me, it struck me as odd. Yeah. Uh, however, uh, so they got to the the dojo and they're, they're concerned at first. They're pissed at Matt, but Luke shows up. Quite quickly. So, yeah, Jessica, don't assume that he's been taken. <laughs> he's fine. Uh, but he's nabbed himself. He nabbed the one in the white hat. He's got yeah. him captured, uh, which is what he's into the titles. And basically, the episode from this point on, it's a lot more split up than the previous episodes, which I think is maybe partly drew the pacing down. Uh, but it was basically 
they're kind of interrogating him on and off, but once he makes a threat to all the loved ones, a lot of the episode is them going around to their sort of closest supporting characters. Collecting them, basically. And, yeah, and collecting them and taking them to the police station, where Misty is now kind of protecting them at the station. And it's this double-edged sword, because it's nice to see, oh, we're going to get all these people together, and we're going to yeah. see them all interact and play off each other. But at the same time, it feels like, can some of this happen off-screen? I mean, I like some of it. Like, uh... Uh, uh, maybe the collecting could have happened off screen to an extent. Some of it was really good though, because obviously when when Jessica goes to get Trish, and uh, you know Han shows up and we get this fight, and then and Daredevil intervenes and he's in his costume. It's the first time we see him in the costume. It's actually quite a fist pumping moment, and it's also just great from a. It's great to see Trish's reaction to this. Like, wait, Jessica knows Daredevil. Whoa, yeah. What's going on? And also, gotta give him res- like respect for the restraint of keeping him out of the costume till over halfway through the show. Yeah, yeah, episode five, and what I like though is as soon as he's in the costume, it's like he really has, because in the very next scene when they go back to interrogate again, he like he, you know he puts his billy club cable around the guy's neck and he's like, right, you're going to start talking or things are about to get goddamn dark in here, and like the rest of them are just sort of standing like, uh, what? Uh, well, obviously, like, should, should we stop it? Yeah, obviously, Danny's like, oh, that's cool, and looks like oh, it's kind of cool, uh, but. No, but it was funny because when when they actually first get back to the dojo, I I got real or maybe it was when they got to this place where they're, they're holding the guy. But it, I got really annoyed at Danny again because because Danny started going, "How can I trust you if you keep keeping secrets?" And because this is when he's explaining about who Electra is and yeah, you know, all the all all the backstory and stuff. Uh, I I did jo- Jessica continues to be kind of my favorite of the characters just because she really does point out things in a normal sort of down-to-earth way because she points out in this conversation like i just want to say we've said a resurrection now three times you know because it's not a normal <laughs> thing to be talking about as if it's an actual yeah. thing she, she's definitely my favorite yeah so so d- digging that digging that but yeah so uh, i i liked once all the characters got together and like you know you had trish and malcolm looking over across the room and it's like who's that because you know they're looking at uh What's her Karen. Face? Karen. Yeah, I, I, I was like, it's not Kate. It's not Kate. It's not Kate. It's Karen. Right, and you know, and Foggy comes in. They're looking over, like, who are they? Like, and, and it's kind of like they're just sort of starting to guess. And I, I like the fact that they said that when Claire wasn't sitting there, because she could have just, oh, that's, yeah, that's their devil's yeah. buddies. That, that's, but yeah, I, I felt a little bit bad for Luke though, because I mean, arguably Claire's there for him, but like uh, everyone else had two people there. From he's got Misty. Oh, okay, sure. Technically, yeah, Misty. Yeah, I, I guess. She's just higher yeah. ranking. She can k- take care of herself. Right, basically. right. But she's there in in the same place, and he's she she's is. part of his cast. Yeah, that's true. I, I think my my problem with the the collecting thing was, like like you say, like some of it was really good, like like Jessica's. But then there was the uh, collecting. I mean, the collecting clear itself in the building was fine, but it was what happened outside the building with Colleen that drug the whole thing down. Right, and and, and that was when when Bakuto Bakuto Bakuto. 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 That's when he shows up. And it was when he showed up and I groaned and I'm like, this feels like Iron Fist again. What's happening? And yeah. it's, it's all Colleen telling him, like, oh, you took my life from me and you, you told me this, and you, you got, told me that. you got Danny doing that fight, but he's got the hoodie on, so it's like, just it's it's just stunt double the whole time. You can, because mm. they make no effort about it because they don't show you his face at all during this. I mean, I'll be honest, I barely remember there was a fight with him there. <laughs> Which maybe shows you how memorable it was. Uh, that's fair. Mm. But 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 this is the problem. Like like I, I like seeing some of it, but not others. But they feel obligated that if they're going to mm. show one, they have to show it for everyone on the team. And that kind of feels like that's why this episode feels bloated, because they, they feel obligated to be fair to everyone on the team. Yeah, And which, then it's like, but we didn't need all of them. Which is honestly kind of... It's kind of annoying, because... I think I'd be cool with one episode did focus on more on one character, with the exception of Iron Fist. Like that would be the downside to that is if we got to the episode that was we'd more Iron Fist. We'd have to have an Iron Fist yeah, episode as we, well, wouldn't And we'd yeah. hate it. And maybe that would have been how to do it. Like this, I mean, I know it's eight episodes, but let's say, let's say it was six, or let's, say, let's just give it an extra two. Let's say it was ten, right? And you kind of started with a big double. You end with a big double that's kind of all equal. But then in the middle of that, you have four episodes that kind of focus on one or the other. A bit more, say, you know, or if it was six, you'd have one. That's still, that's still eight episodes, isn't it? Yeah. You were saying about ten. Two, two at the start. 
Then oh, four. you're right. Yeah, my math is just terrible. Yeah, you're yeah. right. Yeah, I was like, I was like, what, what, where, where's the ten come gone? <laughs> Look, it's been a long weekend. These defenders episodes have really messed up my sleeping. It's just, I'm, I'm trying, folk. I'm trying. <laughs> Uh, but maybe that's there you go. You've given them the, the formula already. Yeah, like I, the two at the start for them to become you know get yeah. together and, and still have them separate and, and follow along. But at the same then, time, after that episode two, I really liked that the episode like no episode. Well, that was after two. It was actually four. But it, I, I liked there was an episode where it was just them sitting in a room and be like, "All right, let's explain who who the hell yeah. each other are. What what is going on?" Like I, I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> so at this point, we've only got a few left, and it's like, well, how, how do you do it? Um, so I, I don't begrudge this episode because it does kind of like yeah it moves you know, it's, the, it's the moving the pieces on the chessboard we talk about this a lot yeah. with certain TV shows uh, where you have episodes that are fine but they're not that exciting in and of themselves they're just there to kind of move everything ahead uh, and that's kind of what this was uh, so apart Murakami is the name of the Japanese uh, finger and Sawandi is the name of the uh, the one in the white hat I just wanted to get those names because I, I was kind of dodging around them because I couldn't remember them but I've got them now uh so yeah, and then there's the, the hand drama from the other side, which is actually a little bit bogged down uh, by Pakuto. Yeah. Did you look over his name there? No, I, you know, I looked to find it and I couldn't see it. And I panicked <laughs> and I just went for it. Um, but like, honestly, him being there kind of dragged it down a little bit because it, you know, it cuts to this like meeting room table kind of scene and like he's sitting there uh, talking to uh, Murakami and Alexandra comes in and goes there and they're, they're kind of debating about what they should do and I'm like, I just, I, I, the, the way they've, they've kind of, like, and I know they've set up the resurrection stuff, but him just coming back makes Iron Fist season feel even more pointless. Yeah. And and also just just so that, that, that this isn't a case of, oh, we don't like him because he's from Iron Fist. Gal was pretty heavy in Iron Fist. I don't really have a problem with her. I know. I actually kind of liked her about the start. Like, see how in the... Uh, Jessica puts the dumpster in front of the door so they and can't she just, get through. Uh, yeah, you and, all, the, like, all the foot soldiers trying. And they all try, and then they just stop, and then it's like just slowly in walks go, and you're like, oh, she's going to cheat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and sure it enough. Just goes, you, you, it just goes skidding across out the back. It's yeah. great. Yeah, and Gal was fine in Daredevil. I think there was maybe too much of her in Iron Fist, but... Um, she, she's not bad, and we, we're liking Alexandra. And the other two yeah. are kind of unknown quantities still, but... They're, they're kind of just there to be fighters, or... or, or Maybe Murakami's a fighter. Maybe Sawandi's more. They're, they're kind of filling out the ranks at the minute. Like yeah. we need five, so here's another well, it's couple. Not five but anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't really know much about them, do we? Like it... like we do the other three. Because Sawandi's uh, got his head cut off by stick. Yep. That was fun. Yeah. So. That was pretty cool. That was the thing. Uh, actually, Joe at Lane, I really liked. I cool. liked. Um... So Misty's trying to say to Colleen that you should stay here and because like, oh, I can take care of myself and it's like yeah but you come in like with a you know just a, a big sword stab wound like you you're injured and whatnot and it's like yeah you kind of count in this as well by the way and she's like hey I'm a cop it's like trust me they don't give a shit <laughs> like I kind of yeah. like that line uh, I appreciated that uh, but no so I yeah I think there was a lot of little things to like in this episode but i think overall as a in terms of pacing in terms of the overall kind of what it did as a whole it just it didn't feel as satisfying as any of the previous episodes well, I'm, I'm a little worried that they're starting to feel beholden to being even towards all of the, the members and i think that wasn't a problem in the first couple of episodes because you know we we were setting up them all and then it wasn't a problem in you know, the, the the fourth one obviously because they're all together but here it just felt like okay, we have to have a, an equal amount of Luke as we do Danny, as we do Matt, and I feel like I didn't really need all of this. It's just bloating it out a little bit because it because they feel obligated to have it. Yeah, I mean this was like a fifty-plus minute episode. You could have probably cut five minutes out of it, which doesn't doesn't sound like a lot, but it actually is. Like if you, it makes a difference. Yeah. So 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 we had uh, all, all of that. They eventually do kind of again. So Andy tries to break free. Stick just kind of not care i mean stick's grown on me a little bit because of the way he is with people like his attitude is actually starting to grow on me a little bit i didn't like it, it, it really level. felt like you know like here he was like yeah i don't give a shit if i catch iron fist accidentally mm. and then you know the way he was like you know the way he was talking to my going that iron fist he ain't a leader oh which reminds me he, actually, he ain't so, up to scratch so, so andy at one point says uh danny's the dumbest iron fist yet and again i'm just like <laughs> I'm yes just there go. i was like i'm not supposed to be agreeing with the villain this much but yes uh, yeah yeah not he is he's a moron 
by all means, sing it, sing it from the heavens. So, so I do like some of the things that are interesting with the hand. The, the rest of the team are kind of like starting to not trust Alexandra because they think the dark sky isn't working out. They Black think sky. that the black sky, sorry, they think that she's not working out, and they, you know, either pissed that she used the last of her resources on on her, but they're also kind of like this was kind of a, it was all the eggs in one basket, and they don't think the baskets. You know, yeah, I kind of like, like I wish you'd defend it by going, yeah, but how do we choose which, if there's only like enough for one person to come back, how do they decide which of them so Whoever dies it? next, and <laughs> which right, I guess would be yeah. Sawan, there, but... You know. Right, but then they're going to go, yeah, but what if I die? Is it worth it to bring him back? Uh, it's, it's a fair... So this kind of takes away that question, in theory, should have brought them but together. The, the rift is also developing, as so they know she's dying, and like Gao even points this out, like, they have a goal, they want to get to a certain place. It it wasn't quite Kunlun, but it, it was, it, or maybe it is Kunlun. Yeah, I think it was Kunlun. Like they, they want to get back because that was their whole thing. They were banished. Yeah. So, I I mean I guess there's like a chi or some or mystical energy that stops them specifically from entering because obviously they send goons to wipe it out. Right. I wonder if there's more of the the restorative stuff. In oh, Kun actually, Lund. do you think it was Electra specifically who wiped out Kunlun? Ah, oh, it could have been actually. Actually, that's more interesting if it was Electra who went in like a Terminator and took them all out. Yeah, and that yeah, mean, that that could be a big thing if like Danny finds that out, and it would give them conflict because obviously Daredevil's trying to like bring her back. And right, because at the minute he's the only one with the link to her specifically. Which and I like that the hand did acknowledge this, and that got them worried. Like yeah. he's obviously uh, Mirakami brings that up, and he's like, "Oh, at first I thought she was just saving the killer for herself, but now he's thinking, oh, she actually was protecting him." Uh, but even Alexandra looks a little bit worried when it's like, oh wait, so one of the people on this team is like the person she loved, this is a personal connection, this could do something and it all yeah. sort of builds up where Electra actually kind of skips out uh, at, at the end of the episode and she goes to Matt's apartment and she just kind of just kind of takes it in and ends up lying in the bed, which is the same bed, like I'm pretty sure we got a very similar shot in Daredevil Season 2 of her lying I in that bed did, like that yeah. Yeah. so no, uh, I will say I think this is the most interesting the hands ever been because we kind of hated the hand in Daredevil season two. For yeah. us specifically, that was the worst part of that show. Yeah, and, and then, then Iron, Iron Fist is a weird did thing. Nothing to help. Yeah, we just hated everything in Iron Fist. So it didn't it, really help. The, the hand specifically weren't the problem in Iron Fist, but yeah. it, it kind of just soured us more on them. Where, well, yeah, I'll agree. Because up until now, they are, because of the way they've been handled as this big bad, they've kind of worked a bit more, and now because. We have this inner conflict. We understand what their goal is, and because we actually have a character to put a face to it. Right. That's it. I think it's that they have a goal because we've always had Gao and Bakuto. Like we've had people there, but but now it's like okay, I get what they're doing. They're not just trying to destroy cities for the sake of it. They've got a goal. So I think yeah. that automatically just gives them something that makes me more interested in them. Yeah. Yeah. No, I can I can see that. But yeah, I think it was an okay episode. I was definitely the weakest. Like I, I was feeling the pacing a little bit, and yeah. luckily it shied away a little bit more from the Iron Fist stuff after the whole uh, Bakuto scene. But yeah. there was like a good little five minute chunk there where I was like, Ugh. oh, that whole conversation with Colleen, I was basically zoning out. Yeah, no, I am right there uh, to the point where I've never cheered more when when like. Luke steps in and just like throws him across the room or whatever he did. Like you know, it's, it's, I think it's yeah. when he's fighting Danny. Like Luke steps in and it's like, all right, okay, thank thank God someone else showed up. Yes, yes, Luke. It's like we can move on now. Crush them, crush them all with your big hands, please. Crush them. Ah, <laughs> uh, but damn. Uh, so definitely the weakest episode of the season so far for me. Uh, yeah. It, it's not even a, a competition. I th I think as much as I like some of this stuff, I I like Daredevil going kind of bad cop we'll call it on the yeah. you know and I, I the, loved him showing up for Jessica yeah that was good I was expecting someone to show up because obviously Jessica is good but this guy obviously is a badass as well and right. she's, she's handling her own to a point she's getting her ass kicked and then I, I mean and to be fair we're supposed to believe Danny is better than her we're, we're supposed to believe that and even he needs Luke to show up and help out yeah yeah. So it it only makes sense that someone also, has to Also, nice you know. lighting touch. Because uh, obviously the, they were at a restaurant and then they go to like another floor that's maybe like not being used. Like it's another gala yeah. hall that's not being used. The lighting was a mixture of reds and purples. And it was like Daredevil nice, and Jessica scene. That was a really cool little touch. 
I, I really enjoy how they're playing with the lighting in the show. Yeah, because even earlier on, when Danny had the hoodie on and he was looking for uh, like Colleen, like everything was really yellow, and I thought, oh, maybe we're doing away from the color scheme since that he's, you know, that's, that's Luke's color, but you know, Luke was also in that scene eventually, yeah. so I can see what they're doing. We, we, that was foreshadowing. <laughs> it was foreshadowing. Uh, but no, that was kind of it. That was the whole yeah. thing. Uh, so no, I'm still looking forward to watching the rest of and seeing seeing where it goes. I, I, I do, I do think this one. This was the only one so far where I'm like, okay, I'm not loving this. Like, it's definitely... Yeah, it, it wasn't awful. And like I said, there's, there's still moments where I'm like, oh, this is still great. But then overall, it just, just wasn't quite on the level of the others. Oh, actually, I don't know. They improved on Stick's stump in this episode, because I forgot to mention it in the last episode. Mm. But there was like a wide shot in the last episode where it was almost silhouette, but the hand with, you know, the, the arm with the stump was longer than the arm that didn't, you know, had the hand still. Yeah. And I'm like, even even if you even if he's just going like that, right? The hand, this one should still be longer. Right. I don't understand how you do that. <laughs> like, yeah. It wasn't in this episode though. No, in this episode at least. I mean, it still kind of looked like it was a little bit too long for what it should be, but it wasn't longer on the other arm at least. So. Right. Yeah. That's important. It's an improvement. Uh, maybe it'll improve again next episode, and it'll finally be. Maybe, maybe every time he slices someone's head off, the arm shrinks. Well, so you think by the, the final episode, he's just going to have one arm? <laughs> yeah. Why not? Sure, sure. I can, I can go with it. Uh, but I, I guess that wraps us up on right, episode six. So we'll be back tomorrow five? with five. Sorry, and we'll be back tomorrow with episode six. I think that's why I had six in my head. Uh, this is a bit of a shambles on my part. Uh, I, I, will, I will perk up for tomorrow's episode I promise you uh, but that is us so thank you once again for watching keep uh, you know tell us what you think of the episode in the comments below like subscribe all that stuff get us on twitter at mailed underscore fudge for channel updates if you want to support the channel head over to patreon.com slash mailed fudge tv you can do that over there but that is us thanks for watching guys we'll see you next time have you got any vanilla